Okay, Colo community. First of all, congratulations on purchasing one of the first Guru Pads. We are so grateful you are taking this journey with us for we are with you. And what I want to do in this video is simply explain to you how to use the Guru Pad. Very simple, very simple. Um, so simple that children can do it. And that's the whole point is we want no barriers to entry to yoga, period. So this mat is meant to be that gateway for you. So if you take a look here at the top of your mat, you'll have these maps. And these maps are color coordinated to specific parts of your floor contacting limbs. So if you see the heel is blue, the outer edge is red. And I explain that by saying that your heel will always land on a blue line. And your outer edge will always align with one of the reds. So it could be here. It could even be here. A lot of options here, a lot of options here. And so that also applies to, if I were to say blue four, you would step your right foot back and land on blue four. Now the outer edge of my foot is red and my heel is on the blue. And that applies to blue five. And even here, we can use this back red line if you want that little extra stretch because my heel is still on the blue. So that is exactly what this mat is about, is color coordinating specific parts of our body to markings on the mat to make placement of your body easier. Now we'll go in one more time and look at the hands and the toes. The only thing that's not up here is that the knees are purple, and I put a little TT in there, which stands for tabletop. And tabletop is often the only time your knees are really on the ground um, or setting up for some similar poses. And this is a great spacing for your knees in any of those poses. Going from here, we got the, the base of the palm is gold. Now the base of the palm is gold, not the hand as a whole. So when you find your uh, alignment with the gold lines, let's say gold one, placing the left palm on gold one, I'm choosing either the top line or the bottom line based on what feels right in my body. And it's such a minor difference that you really can't go wrong. But if you're more of an intermediate or advanced yogi or have a good body awareness, then you will have the ability to discern whether to push or pull. So these push pull lines give you that wiggle room to find a sweet spot. So putting my right hand on gold two could look like this. And my left hand on gold one could look like this. Stepping my right toe back to green two could look like that. And my left toe to green one. And I can place all my toes in there as well. I could do something like this. Or I could even get a little bit wider and put my big toe in there. And if you come and take a look here at my hands a little bit closer, the most important thing going on is that we have a 20 degree angle instead of a perpendicular 90 degree angle going here. So that 20 degree variation off of 90 degrees, making this a 70 degree angle, is unimportant. Forget about the numbers. But what is important is externally rotating your arm so that your shoulder begins to open in the front and engage in the back. This is known as the humeroscapular rhythm, meaning that the head of the humerus and the scapula on the back of your shoulder is working in congruence to find the most natural rhythm for lifting your arm and pressing it away in an extension. And this is really important because one of the big injuries in yoga is often here in the front of the shoulders, bicipital tendonitis, um, issues with the labrum tearing, we don't want that. So encouraging yourself to externally rotate by putting the eye of the elbow through the L of the hand is the ultimate goal. Now, your toes, your knees, and your feet, and your hands all have a place on this mat. There's many other poses in yoga, and we explore those together, and these markings only help. So let's do this together. <laughs>